So what was the emphasis of the defensive adjustments in the second half? Um, you know, we wanted to just make sure we got in our in the gaps a little bit better than what we were in the past with their ISO and one on one, especially with Kyrie James as well was doing it. Uh, and then, you know, towards the end of the game, just tried to send some double teams at him, getting them off the ball. And then even at the end, Lamarcus Aldridge, we were just trying to make sure we kept a bigger body on him to make him um, take some shots over the top. I mean, with all that being said, like I said, I think in the third and the second half, we did a much better job. We had three uh, shot clock violations against him as well. In times we really needed to lock up, we did. But the big thing is we have to start with that mentality. We have to have an end of game mentality. This team, we have, you know, we've seen time and time again that we fight when it comes to the end of the game, but we have to fight when it starts the game as well. We can't wait till people are punching the hell out of us to start punching back. How did you kind of view the the matchups in the rotation? It seemed like you went away from Gafford and then and maybe opted for size. Is that correct? Instead of the point guards? Uh, you asked two different questions, I believe. Am I mistaken in that? Yeah, I guess generally uh, more open-ended. Just how did you kind of view the matchups in the rotations? You know, I think that I, I going into the game, I assumed that Denny would be a very good matchup against James Harden, which he showed to be. So, you know, and then... Uh, I was hoping to get DB going with some shots as well. So, and, and I just thought our size would be better against them and more because the way they drive, the way they penetrate, both James Harden and Kyrie, they do get to the paint well. And when they get there to have a little bit more length over that they have to finish over the top of. But, you know, uh, like I said, I think that Denny did a good job in his minutes. Uh, you know, I'd love for DB to get going a little bit more, but that, you know, I, I think we all believe he's still an unbelievably great shooter. So I have total faith in him. And with, uh, I think, five minutes and 45 seconds left, it looked like an assistant coach of the Nets may have deflected a, a pass. Did you see it in, in real time? And just kind of what was your reaction as that played out? And um, what's your take on um, the situation? Let's see. You asked me if he may have touched it. There's no may have. He did. My reaction was utter disbelief. I've never seen in my very long time in basketball something happen like that that the referees didn't see. Um, everyone's no one's perfect and the mistakes will be made. I get that. But I think in a game like this with uh, the bench conduct being a, code of, uh, a point of emphasis this year, that it's, it's very hard to swallow them missing something like that for me. Um, I do understand that regardless, there's tons of things we could have done better in the game and it should have never came down to us complaining about something like that. But I will say that, you know, this is the best league in the world. It have to be better than that. And nothing against that referee, quite frankly. I think he's a good referee and a really good person. Um, just, you know, I'm, I was just kind of in disbelief. Like I said, I've never seen nothing like that ever. And to be standing there as a head coach to try to deal with it at the time was kind of like, oh my gosh, did I really just see that? <laughs> what was the explanation given on that? Just that he missed it. He didn't see it. If it happened, he didn't see it. No, um, that's it. It's, it's about all the explanation I got. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm big on telling the guys move on the next play. I'm going to move on to the next play. You know, that's like I said, there's tons of mistakes we made as well. We're not perfect. We can't expect the referees to be perfect. I'm not perfect as a coach. No player on this entire stat sheet did not miss a shot tonight. And it's just the way things go. It's a game of basketball. J JB, how, how many times in the first half did you see examples of good defense but better offense, um, good defense from your team, better offense from their team? In other words, guys who were covered real well who none, nonetheless made their made those shots uh i didn't count how many times but there was a few that's for sure uh, like i said Kyrie made some great shots you know in the game of basketball you really want to force people into those um <clears throat> pull up non pain twos and he just did a good job of making them and making them over contested uh con high hands uh, we did a good job of contesting no shots were uncontested that were really hurting us there in the um in the first or the second quite frankly um but, you know, they're good. The one thing that really hurt us in the beginning, in my opinion, is we can't give up and ones at the rim. Either you foul them or you don't foul. Uh, it's one or the other. And uh, that was a, something that I believe hurt us in the first portion of the game.
I think he's constantly taking steps ahead. Um, he's still getting into the flow. I still believe that he, I think we all know he can still play better. Uh, the more comfortable he is out there and more in the rhythm and also, you know, just learning our offense, learning the movements, learning spacing, those type of things, he's going to continue to thrive and improve. Um, so, uh, you know, I was pleased with his performance. Maybe you said uh, you were pleased to not take a step back over the years, so like forward how does this game kind of fit into your guys quest to building consistency uh you know <clears throat> first of all this is only a second game with everybody so when you talk about building consistency number one a consistent team is probably the first part of that but um also like i said the the consistency that i would like to see is the effort that's the big thing for me. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to, this will be like my re reiteration constantly is like, we're not going to play perfect, but our effort can be perfect. And if we can continually do that, that's what I'm pleased about. And I think that um, we definitely had flashes of it. Like I said, they made some tough shots. It's not like we weren't trying. They just made some tough shots. Of course, we made some mistakes. But like I said, I don't expect perfection, but I do expect perfect effort. Um, there's certain plays where I think that we can point out where you could have better effort for sure. I think the way we finished the first half was a lack of effort. There wasn't a lack, uh, it wasn't a mistake. Um, so there's just to give that example, but I will say that, you know, there was more, um, more plays where I saw good effort and damn good shots being made than lack of effort and just mistakes being made. Wayne. Hey, Coach, pregame, we talked about, you know, one of the categories, and you held uh, Brooklyn to 32% from the three-point line. Uh, what did you think of tonight's uh, defense in that aspect from the three-point line? As far as where we did the three-point line, I, I was, like I said, I was pleased. That's what we wanted to do. That's why, I, I, you know, we harp on. We're actually, if I'm not mistaken, the number one um, team as far as limiting three-point opportunities. But, uh you know, the, the thing about it is, and the, quite frankly, is I want to say Kyrie's almost the king of the mid-range shot, and he showed it. And, you know, it was difficult. They got in our paint more, much more than what we should have. And going back to what I said about the first half, you, you, you're going to go in there, either foul him and don't give him the shot, or you just don't foul him. But we can't give up and ones at the rim. Thank you, Coach. Last question, Neil. Hey, Coach, uh, apologies if you already were asked and I didn't hear, but did you consider taking a timeout either when you're bringing up the ball and or after you got the offensive rebound? Um, I, did I consider it? Yes. And I guess just the I thought I mean, process. Honestly, to, I mean, if, you, if your question is, did I consider it and why sure. did you not call it? That might be the more accurate question. Um, I considered it for sure, but I felt like we had such momentum when we got the rebound going the other way, we had them scrambling. So I felt once we got going down there that we we had an opportunity to get a good shot. Um, and then when we did get the rebound, honestly, uh, reviewing the video even myself, because I wanted to make sure I wasn't inaccurate with it, Montrez called a timeout when he got the rebound as he tossed it back to Spence. And... Um, they didn't give it to us. So I, when I saw him call the timeout, I thought either he was going to get it or it's going to be too late if I tried to get it. So, um, but you know, it's the nature of the game. You know, I, I felt that we had a good momentum and rhythm going down to the other end. We got a big stop. Uh, I would have loved for us to get the initial defensive rebound and not give them a second opportunity. But, you know, we had some good thrust getting up the court. Um, and I just thought it, it was advantageous of us to continue with that momentum. Uh, I mean, that's a tough question to really ask or answer because, um, um, well, I think from the first half, you know, we beat ourselves. It's, it's kind of hard to, you know, point blank period. You can't let somebody score 70 points in a half. That's just, that's tough to recover. Um, we did a hell of a job in the second half defensively. 
think we held them to probably about 45 points, um, which that's a, that's a damn good plus for us, especially how we've been so up and down defensively. Um, you know, but I mean, it's tough, you know, you, you know, uh, you talk about consistency, trying to find, you know, who's in, who's out. Um, you know, we're still playing a bunch of guys at the same time too. And, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, most teams in the NBA playing, you know, maybe nine guys, you know, so, um, you know, you just gotta, you know, just gotta live with it sometimes and um, just figure it out on the fly, you know, um, you know, it's life in, life in the NBA, so. Because of that second half and just the crazy way it finished and like the coach just left me everything. Is this one of the ones you can live with? Say it one more time. I'm sorry. Just because of the crazy ending, the fact that you guys were right there and you had this play where the assistant coach is deflecting the ball and everything like that. Is this one of the ones you can live with? Oh, I mean, that was also a horseshit too. I mean, um, you know, I mean, coaches should not be able to stand up. I mean, I get it if it's under two minutes. I mean, everybody in the league stands up, but I feel like it was like 3.50 on the clock. You're standing up. You got Steve Nash blocking the ref's view. You can't see shit. I mean, I don't know what, what else to say. But, um, you know, it's very unfortunate, but uh, you just got to live with it. You know, uh, we had an opportunity at the end. I missed a shot. Live and die with it. You know, shit happens. You like the look you got, though? Huh. You like the look you got on the shot and stuff? Wide open. And I just missed it. I mean, sorry. I can live with that. I can go to sleep tonight. Kyle, how did um, that turnover on the deflection uh, change the moment or alter the momentum of the game? Uh, well, I mean, I got to do a better job with my frustrations. Um you know, came back down. I just fouled Patty Mills because I wanted to yell at the ref. I mean, that's un, that's that's uncalled for. And then we had a foul the next possession, and they go to the free throw line. Um, so you know, I take that one on the belt. But um, like I said, it's just an unfortunate situation. Um, you know, there's a couple guys out there that horse shit all night. So I live with it. Uh, Coach Blair said he'd never seen anything like that. Have you in, in your career? Was that a first? Um, I mean, AAU basketball is what it looked like. So, I mean, <laughs> just how to live with it, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, you obviously had a great view of it. I'm not sure everyone on the team saw it. Um, what was kind of like the, the moments after that? I know you said you fouled uh, Patty, but you, do you have brunch run to the coaching staff and kind of tell them what you saw? Uh, I mean, I don't I, I don't, we couldn't even, um, we couldn't even review it. And we already used our review, so it didn't really matter at the end of the day. I mean, the most you can do is yell at the ref, but, you know, he could just say he didn't see it. and would be all right. So, sorry. Now that you were whole again, you kind of had to find yourself. How does um, a game like this help that out? Um, first person we're going to say is Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, I feel like we took – I don't think we took a step back from last game. Um, I think we really competed. Really well, granted. Um, Kai and James were kind of even if we won it in the first half. We were kind of I don't think we showed enough resistance in the second half. We did that. We limited them to like forty points and something like that in the second half. Um, so that's what we can be. You know, I said it after the game. We keep showing our hand. You know, we keep showing that we can we can guard the right way. We can push the ball and execute on offense and get good get stuff. You know and you know, the biggest question is what is our consistency? Can we can we sustain it? You know, uh, granted tonight we we definitely could have won the game. There was you know some janky stuff that happened at the end, but you know we uh, we competed and you know there's no more victories. But you know we got to we got to win this one. Uh, but you know they're they're a good team, they're competitive. You know they are who they are for a reason. Uh, but we're right there. We're right there the whole game. You know we just got to come up with a few plays at the end of the stretch. We'll see a two-minute report tomorrow saying what it should have been called. So we will have Brooklyn State tonight. We'll finish the game tomorrow. Maybe, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, 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 that ain't going to help us. <laughs> um, Brad, when you talk about looking for organization and figuring out the rotations and everything like that, you've also got a trade deadline coming up in about a month. How long 
does this team have to wait until it figures that stuff out when there could be more changes coming or not? Uh, yeah, I mean, what you just said, we got went to the 10th. So it's kind of like what I've been saying all year. Uh, you know, you, we can, you can wait, but you eventually run out of games, you know, and, you know, we're at the deadline now and everybody, you know, you either make a move or you roll with what you have. Um, and, you know, we, we definitely, it's tough because we have a lot of guys we're playing, we're switching up our lineups. And we all know in one way or another, we know what that, kind of looks like it means for a lot of teams and um, you know I'll probably talk to Shep and see what's cooking you know I don't, I don't know but we go out and compete no matter who's who we have on the floor you know but like you said it is I think it, it's imperative to note that you know it is a few weeks away you know so if we do make a move you know we gotta, we gotta get on the ball get that guy in get whoever it is in and, you know get get acclimated and get guys going um, but it's tough you know it is it's always one of the toughest parts of the year, you know, um, team-wise, individual-wise. Um, you know, you see the rumors every day, you know. Uh, so it's tough, you know, but, you know, you stay professional and uh, you continue to come to work every day and control what you can control. Yeah. We uh, talked to Coos, and he was right in front of the deflection yeah. the coach. Um, did you notice it right away? How did you mm -hmm. realize that? Yeah, and I was at the top of the key, which is... I know I had LASIK, but I know my vision probably ain't. I can't see that damn far that good, but that was clear as day. You know, <laughs> Vanderpool, my guy, well, he, he was playing defense for sure. He was playing defense. Uh, I mean, it happened. You know, we can't, it's unfortunate we can't do nothing about it. You know, would that have changed the game? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but, you know, we, we there's still other plays in the game we could have made. You know, I could have made my two free throws that we won. Um, you know, so there's, there's so many other plays we could have made in the game that we, you know, we shouldn't have came down to that play, but it was unfortunate. Sorry about that. That illustrated during the game a couple of times. James Harden takes the ball and he puts it in your chest. chest. Mm -hmm. That's a foul, right? It's a great offensive move, but yeah, I think it's a foul. Yeah. yeah. It's a vet move. This is very smart. You know, it's because it's subtle. The refs really can't see that contact, you know, that close to the body at times. and. You know, it's a smart, it's a good move. He's been doing it for a while. I think they just, they're just now starting to get a little, starting to get a, a hold of it. But I mean, it's just, it's smart for sure. How does your offensive rhythm compare now to the last time you came back from uh, a, a similar absence? Uh, it's kind of the same, kind of the same. I, I didn't lose really much of a step. I was pissed. I missed like 10 layups in the first half tonight. Mm -hmm. My rhythm's good. I have a good bounce. You know, I like the flow of our offense and uh, probably sometimes I should be a little more selfish, be aggressive. And uh, for the most part, I think we do a good job. We get good shots. Uh, I think we got to stop turning the ball over. But uh, for the most part, we, we do a good job of just sharing the ball, getting good shots as best we can. Going back to what you were saying about the deadline, because you guys have a lot of like favorable contracts or movable like assets, mm -hmm. does, does that make it harder as a team to – either turn it out or is it more challenging or anything like that? I mean, that's the, that's the, that's where the professionalism kicks in in our, in, our, in our jobs, you know, because we, like I said before, we realize some guys are going to play, some guys aren't, you know, a lot of names, guys' names are going to come up in rumors and, you know, being on the blocks, you know, Washington's, you know, putting such and such out, like that's going to happen, you know, um, whether it's true or not, you have no control over that, you know, unless your agent calls you and tells you what's going on. All you can do is, you know, control what you can do every single day coming to work, you know, and that's, that's up to us to continue to keep that environment as positive as it is, you know, and it's tough. And we're not the only team that goes through it, you know, it's, it's, it's our league, you know, guys move in and out, you know, constantly. So, um, it's a few weeks away, um, but, you know, we, we definitely try to keep our poise, stay professional as much as possible um, and just control what you can control, man. If you, if you're not, if you're not, Getting tick with us, you know, there's 30, 29 other teams watching. You know, we've seen guys have success, you know, after trade. So anything is possible. Brad, we, we know that even in, even pros have a finite amount of energy that they can expend. Is it realistic to think that the same defensive intensity that the team showed in the second half is something that can be sustained throughout an entire 48-minute game? Yes. 
because we have 12 to 15 guys, you know, and it's not just going to be five on the court that are, the greatest five on the court are going to be done at the time, but there's going to be a new five that comes in that, you know, the same expectations are going to be, you know, the exact same. Um, so I would say, yeah, you know, it is possible. You know, I think there's a few games, I think like four or five games where we played really, really good, perfect games this year, you know, on the defensive end and that carried us to wins. Um, you know, so I think it's, I think, like I keep saying, we showed our hand, we showed we can do it. And, you know, that's where our, our consistency and our attitude as a team has to be. You know, we have to know that's for us to be good and, you know, an elite team. You know, that's what we have to do. That's what we have to, that's what we have to be from the start of games, you know, not just the second half. Neil. Hey, Brad. First off, just how was your conditioning uh, for yourself today, second game back? I was okay. Uh, maybe a little bit windy in the third one. I was, I was, I was kind of going a little bit, but uh, I was fine. I was fine. I was uh, the usual. I was good. And, you know, like you said, you held them to, I think, like 45 points in the second half. Kind of coach was telling us that, you know, you can't always be perfect, but I can expect perfect effort. Yeah. Was that kind of the message at halftime to try and get it turned around? Yeah, it was a great message by Coach JB. You know, it was, he said, you know, you guys aren't going to be perfect. We're not going to be perfect as a staff, you know. Um, but I expect your effort to be perfect every single time. You know, take one possession as its own possession. You know, don't worry about the one before. Don't worry about the one that's coming after this. Um, don't worry about the last shot. You know, don't worry about the refs. You know, worry about this possession, give them a stop executing on offense. Um, and I think we did that in the second half. You know, and I think that, that definitely the message was relayed for sure. Thanks, Brad. Last question to Wayne. What's good, Brad? Uh, you finished with nine assists tonight. With adding the facilitation to your game, do you feel like teams are defending you differently now? Uh, in some ways, um, I think a lot of teams are still more or less making me pass. You know, they're making me um, get off the ball. Um, it's a totally different dynamic than last year. Like this year, we have guys who can facilitate, who can put the ball on the floor, who can knock down shots, you know, who can really be threats and not have to load up on me all the time. You know, so once they're going, they're going, you know, they freeze up me on a lot of drives and a lot of, you know, one-on-one -on -one situations, you know, so. Uh, I mean, teams are still trying to make me get off the ball. I think I'm just kind of more or less figuring out ways to to manipulate and keep them from you know doubling as as strong as possible, and uh, I'm just trying to make the right reads.